as they are in the tournament for the first time in 33 years. They have all the makings of a sleeper, one of the most stout defensive teams in the field. And they can knock down the three-point shot at a 40% clip. Anthony Lawrence into the paint. That's out to Chris Lakes, the DC kid, with six to shoot. This is a long two off the front of the rim, and Dante Ingram clears for the Ramblers. What a good matchup uh, by the Ramblers. All the Miami right off the bat. This is Marcus Towns. Cluster out front. This is Towns from deep. Won't go. And the rebound pulled by Dewan Hewell. And if you watch the Ramblers on screen and rolls, they just don't allow the screener to screen them. They get over, they get through it. They work extremely hard on pick and rolls. Clock at 10. This is Lawrence. Pretty reverse play across his body to get us our first points. Anthony Lawrence has about nine points a game, but he is as athletic as they come. This is a Miami team that is battle tested, won their final four regular season games by a combined eight points. Big road win for Notre Dame. Also took care of North Carolina. What a drive and finish by Big Cameron Crutwig, the freshman out of Illinois to tie the game early. Cameron did a nice job of driving, felt the contact, used his counter, just rolled right off of Ewell and got a chance to score that one. Freshman of the year in the Missouri Valley Conference this season. Two minutes gone by, this is Jaquan Newton able to turn the corner. He's not quick. He just finds a way to get where he wants to. He is savvy and crafty at that point guard position. He's got that old man quickness. A senior out of Philly, top 10 in school history in games played. His 127th appearance today. Look at Crutwig. Incredible agility. A little old man quickness there. That's an oxymoron, <laughs> though, right? Old man in quickness? Come on. Man, you can't get anything past you. <laughs> look at Cameron. He, he's going to pivot two or three times down in the post. He's patient. That's fantastic footwork. And he uses both hands really well. Shot clock at 10. This is Lawrence, a junior, St. Petersburg native. Shot clock down at 5. Here's Lakes. Look at the little guy amongst the trees as he's knocked to the deck. And then look at Lakes rip it back. The theft and then the deuce. Well, you saw on that drive, his size hurt him on that one. He couldn't get it up. But then the small quickness of him on the next play to get it back on that steal, that's where he could do damage. He couldn't see the forest, but he certainly dug for that <laughs> acorn right there. Here's Ben Richardson now in front to Custer. That's a three. And Loyola moving in front. And that's the Missouri Valley player of the year. Clayton Custer, outstanding shooter. You know what I like, Land? They call it the Larry Bird player of the year. That's what, that's what I like. Heart and soul of this team. Shot from Hewell won't go. And Richardson the other way. Here is Dante Ingram. And look at the senior dialing it up from way deep. Yes, Dante shot that one. Extreme confidence from him being able to pull up. He led this Rambler team with 67 three-pointers. And just remember, Loyola Chicago, almost 51% from the field on average. One of the top three teams in the nation in field goal percentage. They make shots. Shot clock down to seven. Hurricanes, all kinds of stagnant here. Lakes. Hurricanes wanted to foul as Lakes hits the deck. That comes in. His pass stolen. Well played by Lawrence. Lakes basket hanging on the other end and is fouled. It's on Richardson. And that'll put Lakes to the free throw line when we come back. But the Ramblers not looking like an 11 seed early on. They look at Dante Ingram in rhythm, knock it down. And the excitement, the Ramblers are up six versus the Hurricanes. Four. Such an incredible story. Sister Jean Dolores Schmidt. And in those emails that she sends to the players, guys, she'll send a personal note 
telling them what to do, what she's seen. She knows the trends of the players, leads them in prayer before every home game. She's here in support. She is a treasure on that campus in Chicago. Boy, how fortunate are they to have their own personal guardian angel? <laughs> yes, and I love the scout reports that she sent out to the coaching staff. That story is what makes this tournament so great and so unique. What a start for the Ramblers. Three point lead over the six seeds. The Miami Hurricanes. This will be an offensive foul on the pass. There's Porter Moser, 49 year old head coach of Loyola, Naperville, Illinois native. Coach of the year this season in the Missouri Valley Conference and well deserved. And there, his counterpart, Jim Laranega's seventh year in South Florida, one of the most colorful personalities we have ever seen in the sport. The Bronx born coach trying to get this Miami program back to the top. Miami, three of their first seven shooting. Errant pass way high off the hands of Ibuku Izundu as the Hurricanes turn it over, much to the happiness of those young Rambler fans. Watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now, NCAA.com slash March Madness, or download the app today. Ramblers at this end of the floor, four of five shooting. At least they started, but just... Got many looks down the stretch. Good find there as they go underneath. They left Andre Jackson. Wide open down low. If you're going to protect anything, you got to protect the paint. Andre Jackson, a senior Dallas kid, back in his hometown, playing about 20 minutes away from where he grew up. As Miami turns it over again, that's Anthony Lawrence. You can see coming off, being able to, the rotation was not there. Andre Jackson slipped right underneath. Beautiful pass. He caught it. What I love the use of the pump fake to get him an easy deuce. Yeah, he just slipped that screen, opened up to the ball as he should, fundamentally sound. He got rewarded. Here's Clayton Custer. Now out front to Ingram. Ingram, such a fantastic athlete, able to get right into the teeth of that Miami defense. Seven point game. All Missouri Valley Conference second team, and you saw that soft lefty touch. I love his body control. Big body on his side, been able to drive and stay on balance and rise up with a nice left hand shot. They're small right now, the Ramblers. It goes inside. They're looking to double. Turn to one run by Loyola, Chicago. Red clock down to two as they bottle up, walk into the corner, and the shot too late. And Jim Laranega's Hurricanes getting all they can handle here in the early going. Well, Lonnie Walker got double teamed, and then once he picked up his dribble the first time, it was all Lucas Williamson all over him. And this is a nice job of getting his hand on the ball. And this swarming matchup zone by Loyola is giving Miami fits right now. You gotta love the enthusiasm, get a chance to watch the bench of the Ramblers, the coaching staff. Oh, everybody sitting over there, they are into this game. See some of their offensive numbers. It's a great season that they had under Moser. Shot eight. stepping out at that time on the weak side rebound pulled by Izundu. Miami struggling offensively to get some clean looks. Have not scored now in over four minutes. Dayan Vasilovic. He's checked in for the first time for Miami. Play clock at 10. Wardenburg inside. Loyola fans screaming for a traveling violation, but it will be Izundu, the junior out of Charlotte, at the line for two. Watch the drive. One, two. It's just a slow Euro step. He didn't travel on that play. Good pass. Very slow. Well, actually, he kind of did because you're, you pick up your dribble, you go one, two. You're supposed to leave your feet and go to the back. He took one, two, and stood there and passed it. You said and the officials probably figured he left his feet, but he really didn't. Well, you're seeing what everyone was talking about. All the experts asked who's the sleeper this year in the field. Loyola was 
I believe the top of everyone's list in the first couple of minutes, guys, you're seeing right here. Ben mentioned their shooting numbers, top three in field goal percentage, also at the top in defensive field goal percentage. There's not many weaknesses in their game. No, not at all. And you can see they're on a the string as far as communication. That's what I'm liking so far at the beginning of this game. The communication from the bench, from the coaching staff, the five guys that's on the floor, the bench, the crowd, everything right now going for it remains to be seen how they finish this game, but you know, this is underrated team out of an underrated conference, Missouri Valley Conference. Wichita State, formerly of that coach to the American, does some damage there in the con in the uh, tournament right now in a high seed. So don't sleep on the Missouri Valley Conference because they've got some outstanding teams, outstanding players. So Jim Laranega on that bench certainly knows what it's like to be a pesky at heavy seed. As Ingrid misfires on a three. And the rebound tracked down by Vasilovic. Vasilovic did a nice job. Body inside. And as you can see, they're doing a good job scrambling the Ramblers. Miami, no field goals in more than five minutes That's before nice. that shot. Nice. And they gave it to him because he demanded the ball. Didn't give it to him immediately. But when you get a guy that feels it like that, was he's the biggest guy on the floor, you better give him a chance, right? He wanted that one, Land. You're totally right, and I love the hard dribble, the bounce, and then he threw his body into the oh. some space. Look at the spacing right here. They use a lot of high screen and roll. This is Custer underneath to Crutwig. Third mm. basket for the big fella. He makes room for himself. Uses that big body to clear folks out. I thought he did a nice job laying on the pass. The basketball wasn't right on time, but he went grabbed it, went got it with those soft hands. When you said it best, he cleared out some space. Shot 60% on the season, fourth highest number by a freshman in Division I this season. See, every place Walker goes, if he makes any penetration beneath the three-point line, he gets doubled. This is Newton, shot clock down to one. He stepped out of bounds. Take a look now at our Indeed tournament resume. We told you about the Loyola Ramblers, 11th seed in the South, 28 wins. First time in the tournament in 33 years. Love the rhythm they are. You see up on the board, a turn on a 10-game winning streak. Ball here against the Ramblers underneath, so Miami will get it back. We saw that last appearance that they made in the tournament back in 1985. They lost to Patrick Ewing at Georgetown, made it all the way to the Sweet 16. And I haven't been back since until this year. And this terrific team that Moser has put together in Chicago. Here's Walker. Desperately need him to have a big day. If Miami hopes to advance. That was the one time out there that he didn't see any challenge. Went behind the screen, got a wide open look. Walker, all freshman team in the ACC this season. It was a special talent. Huge for them down the stretch. Off the hands of Crutwig as Loyola turns it over. You see, he comes off that screen. A nice re screen. And then he squares up on balance. And a little shooter's roll. That's a nice look for him. First open look for him. And you saw Crutwig was nowhere to be found on that screen. Got there too late. Usually you'll see Loyola Chicago hard hedge or even try to flatten out the ball handle. Certainly contest the shot. There's Crutwig now. It's a three-pointer. He got hit on the arm on that play. Good challenge by Custer. Walker screaming for a foul. Here's Richardson in the corner. And a Crutwig to him back. Excellent defense by Wardenberg, the freshman. Out of Newton, and this will be a traveling violation. They really didn't get any explosion, any lift right there. And Wardenberg, a nice job of holding his spot, going straight up. I think Crutwig was probably too much of in a hurry if he used that big body as he did the last bucket he scored. Put it on the floor, got a little closer on the ball fake. Probably would have gotten a foul and possibly an end one. See the shoot. Nice the Ramblers beautifully done as Jackson rolls to the cup. 
They have great movement, and that was a nice play when he slipped the screen. Caught the Hurricanes defense falling asleep. He said they used a lot of screen and rolls. And Cannondale, Texas, a suburb of Dallas. Back in his hometown, what a moment for him and his family. As that Wardenburg pass a little bit too much. And now gets an earful from Jim Laranega. A reminder, you can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament at NCAA.com. This has been intense. It has. Miami and Loyola Chicago with the winner advancing for a second round date with the Tennessee Volunteers. There's Richardson in the corner. The pass. Jackson walked inside. DeWan Hewell with the denial. DeWan Hewell using his size, and Jackson thought he had an easy one. And look at Lonnie Walker. Great ball movement, body movement, straight line drive. Playing downhill, that's what they have to do. You know, Miami is playing without their star. Of course, Bruce Brown hurt in late January with the foot surgery on February the 1st. Such a huge loss for this Miami team, but it has been longer after a, a ragged start to his freshman season in his career, really starting to turn it on down the stretch. This is a nice matchup between Walker and Ben Richardson, who's the Missouri Valley Conference Defensive Player of the Year. Walker again. Too much off the back rim and the Ramblers control. Ingram challenging Walker on the interior, and the officials say it will be Loyola basketball when we come back. As you can see, wall up, big fella blocked a shot, and the Hurricanes out and running with Walker. The fourth with a nice little layup. Miami's gotten themselves in trouble. Six turnovers thus far. They only turn it over about 11 times per game. Jackson left wide open. Half dozen points for Jackson as we send it over to Rhymes. I was outside the Miami huddle and Coach Larinaga told his team, guys, we need stops. We need to play defense. We need rebounds so that we can get out and run. But to run, we want some more pace. Well, Vasilovic rise gets him some scoring on that sequence. Much needed bucket for the Hurricanes to get it back to three. Here's Jackson outside the reset with Custer. Custer's done a nice job of breaking down the defense, keeping his dribble. Those two, Custer and Richardson, by the way, teammates since the third grade for all but one year. Just an incredible story that we'll tell you as the afternoon goes on. A reminder to grab yourself a Coke because your bracket was perfect. It was just that the teams were off. I use that excuse. <laughs> Haven't we all? Opening full day of the NCAA tournament. One of the truly great days in sport. Happy to have you with us. Spiro Dita, Steve Smith, and Elmore, Roz Gold on Wood A. That is Newton. And a chance at a three-point play. Quan Newton's just finds a way. The senior just comes off the screen. A little bit of body hesitation. Good defense by Ben Richardson. But he finds a way to get, get it up on the glass. And playing downhill is going to be the key for the Hurricanes. Well, Jaquan Newton is Miami's best player off the high screen and roll. He comes off hard and with a purpose. Richardson picked up his second personal, so he has to be careful here. And now Bruno Skokna will check in for the first time, a sophomore Croatian national for Porter Moser. All tied at 20. After the three-point play by Jaquan Newton. And Bruno's a three-point shooter. Comes in as a specialist. Loves a shot fake, but he's going to shoot the three. And the floater from Ingram won't go. Uh, suddenly, Loyola's offense is going a little bit cold. Here's Walker. And he set. In front to Hewell. And Lakes as we hit the six-minute mark. First half. Newton. 
Walker from deep. Haven't seen much from either team, guys, from three-point distance. Lucas Williamson all the way to the rack contact, and he'll shoot two. Love what Lucas did on that play. Caught the basketball. Nice little jab, under control. Drove it right into the teeth of the defense. And you can see Lair Nega is talking to Anthony Lawrence about being able to come over and be in help position early. So here's Williamson, a freshman Chicago kid out of Whitney Young High School. Missouri Valley Conference, all freshman team and all bench team this season. A key cog for the Ramblers. True TV Awareness Month continues next Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern time with the Chris Gethard Show. Live, catch the best original comedies on television all year round right here on True TV. Jackson getting his hands dirty and an extra possession. Can't be happy if you're a Hurricanes fan. They're getting outworked. Dangerous pass fielded by Williamson there right in front of the Miami bench. Pass underneath Anchor. Right. Swatted. Dewan Hewell, Rambler fans screaming for a goal tent. Felt like it was on its way down. And then a whistle blowing it against oh, the Hurricanes. How special was this? Hewell went and got it. Think he Looked got like it. it was on the way down. I thought he got that one on the apex. What you think, Landy? Thought it was on the way down? Yeah, just, just slightly, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> he got it up at the top. But good. Timing from here. Lakes was the man whistled for the foul. Shot down to 10 as that pass from Williamson intended for Jackson out of bounds. And lands into that photographer's row. Yeah, Loyola Chicago falling into that turnover. Right as well. You know, that's their sixth turnover. There's Porter Moser. We told you about his story. Four years as an assistant coach under Rick Majerus. St. Louis major influence on his coaching career. Former player at Creighton. Back in the late 80s. Big, big moment for him and his Loyola men's basketball program. Back in the tournament for the first time in 33 years. Lakes. Miami just one for five from deep. Yeah, the initial matchup zone bothered them, and now Loyola Chicago is going to straight man, and I'm not sure Miami recognizes it. Well, turned over by Cameron Satterwhite, who's checked in, a sophomore Arizona native, and that is turnover number seven. So the Ramblers guy is struggling now, not only the ball security, but they've missed five of the last six shots. And the turnovers have hurt them, and Coach Moser letting Cameron know we can't have those type of turnovers. Walker bottled up in the corner. Good defense by Stokeman. And then they'll reset to Newton. Also, Cutler cut off that baseline. Walker wasn't able to take his man down there. See how they're forcing him sideline, but then getting outstanding ball handling until the attempt to the pass by uh, Walker. But he split that defense. He had an opportunity to go straight to the basket with a little bit too unselfish. That's what you have to do. You said it, man. They are. Making the screen and roll there, turning down the offensive player, not letting him get over the screen. The big is helping down. You got to be able to attack that big and make a play. Look at that pass. Beautiful find, Custer to Crumwig. Clayton Custer has a fantastic feel, and Cameron with a nice screen and no help from the Hurricanes. The paint was wide open. Better than four assists per game from Custer, the junior, and the player of the year this season. In the Missouri Valley Conference. Rebound, rebound. Got it. Taking some contact, unable to put it down, and help the floor comes Marcus Towns. Towns all the way to the cup. Four point game. One man out, Miami. And you're going to have more success than not. And conversely, as you see, only two assists being time for the Hurricanes. Not the ball movement that they would have liked. We come up on the final three minutes, first half. And the winner of this game advances to take out the Tennessee Volunteers here in a second round matchup. Walker is called for a traveling violation. Turnover number eight committed by Miami. Loyola Chicago by four. Made me really want to go to a parochial school and kind of follow the footsteps, but I went to Power Memorial. <laughs>
everybody knows who went to Power Memorial. It wasn't my name. <laughs> oh, you're, you're up no, there. Your name is the up greats. there. Of course, Lou Alcindor, as he was formerly known as legendary Kareem Abdul Jabbar, all time leading scorer in NBA history. As we got a whistle blown here against Izundu, his second. Yeah, but Jim, pretty good basketball player. Went on to Providence and had some success there as well. And before I went to Michigan State, Jim Laranega yes, recruited did. me, and I was <laughs> definitely thinking about it. I told him if this. Michigan State comes in, man, I won't be able to go. And, you know, Jim reminded me, if we played you twice after that, Stephen, we won both games. <laughs> This is a state call the next day, right? <laughs> Dante Ingram, boy, misses everything there. It's out of bounds. How do you say no to Jim Laranaga? I guess if Michigan State yeah, call was going. No, I, I was definitely saying yes. He was at one uh, university that came in early. He loved his coaching style and ever since been a big time fan of Jim's. And one thing he's preaching to his players here, more ball movement. What a job. Get those assist numbers up. What a job he's done. You know, in Miami, it's his seventh season and six out of seven they have 20 or more wins. See only the two assists. They have been at their best. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Has been yeah. Yeah. It just hasn't yeah. been that way so far. And give this Loyola defense some credit for that. Foul charge to Custer his first. But Spiro, don't forget the other side of that equation. It's not just the ball movement, it's movement without it. And when Walker gets the ball, guys can't just stand there. What a move by the one Kewell, the sophomore. First points for the Hurricanes in more than four minutes. I was impressed. His size and agility look very smooth on that play. This is a nice matchup. Chris and also Clayton. Right off the big freshman, first in the corner. What a pass inside the Skokna. Incredible vision by the big fella. And that's what we're talking about. Not only move the ball, but movement without it. And that, that combination resulted in a nice hoop. Chance of defense from these Ramblers. Fans that have made the trek from the Windy City. Under two minutes to play. Nice fouled up on the corner. Shot clock at three. Here comes Walker. Contact no. Offensive rebound. Hewell count it. And he'll step to the free throw line. Good job by Hewell doing a nice job of this. When the ball is driven, getting him right into the front of the rim and getting that offensive rebound. Land talked about it. Look at the body movement of Bruno, but the big fella has a nice touch on that pass. And there's Hewell. What they tell you, Land, get right in the front of the rim and the ball goes up. Yep, you command the front of the rim and the weak side glass. You stay there, good things will happen. Hewell, the sophomore, unable to complete the three point play. So Miami's deficit remains at two with 90 seconds to play before halftime. Loyola Chicago, the champions at the Missouri Valley Conference. As Crowder's backdoor pass is deflected, retrieved in the corner by Custer. Miami, the at large out of the ACC, 22 wins on the season. Jackson from deep. One rebound for Silovic. And back comes Miami. Told you how gritty this Hurricanes team has been this season. Down without their star player, no Bruce Brown. A foot injury in late January. And they really worked hard to get to the tournament down the stretch. With some key road wins over the final couple of weeks of the regular season. Likes is fouled. And Miami in the bonus, so likes to the line for the one and one. A reminder coming up, AT&T at the half scores and highlights and all the latest tournament news. It's all coming up with our crew in the studio, AT&T at the half. And Spiro, you mentioned Bruce Brown's name, and certainly you think of him injecting life into the offense, but you don't realize that he's an outstanding defensive player as well. And he puts a lot of pressure. His absence puts a lot of pressure on the backcourt of Miami because he was the stopper. You rarely saw this team at full strength. You go back to the North Carolina State win on the road. Brown was healthy at that point, and as Jim Laranega told us yesterday, that's when you saw what we were capable of being at full strength. Mm -hmm. Hurricanes climbed to as high as six in the AP poll. But then Brown goes down with the foot, and they had to kind of reinvent themselves. Free throws by Lakes, ties the game at 26. Final 51 seconds of the half.
Well, I think for him is on the offensive end, they want to just keep the basketball movement. They're running a lot of high screen and roll, and they're getting a lot of success. As you can see, Clayton is coming off of they're getting easier looks. They just have to knock it down. Jackson short, offensive rebound, Williamson, and a beautiful little head fake by the freshman. And on this end, Spiro, they're doing a nice job. Miami runs a nice motion offense, but they're switching everything and denying out. And then on ball screens, they're keeping it on one side. If you're the Hurricanes, run the ball screens up higher, make Cameron have to play these guards coming at him full speed with a little bit more space. Got a three second difference, shot to game clock, shot clock at five. Eight seconds left in the game. This is Newton. Here comes the seed from Philly. No. Got it out for seed. It's good. Look at he puts it down. And that takes us to halftime here in Dallas. The Ramblers are switching those down screens, and usually Miami has a chance to swing it from side to side. They're not allowing them to swing it. Well, Aaron Nagin, not the only basketball royalty out of Archbishop Lloyd. Lass had a pretty good career. Yeah, Lass could score. In Queens. Opening second, second half, three-pointer in the corner from Ingram, no good. And you saw the respect that Loyola has for Miami's transition game. Nobody on the offensive glass. All four guys, except for the shooter, tried to get back defensively. Miami Hurricanes 22 and 9, the at-large bid in the ACC. Finished the season 24th in the final AP poll. Playing without their star guard, Bruce. Right went to the end. January, and they have made up for some of his loss. Chris Lakes, the freshman, first lead for Miami since the early moments, the 17-02 mark of the first half. Well, Chris is going to be key because when you start talking about a switch in defense and you switch out on some guy with some slow feet onto Chris, he will be able to penetrate and get all the way into the cup. By Custer and he is turned back. Good interior defense by Miami. This is Lawrence. Good look at it, couldn't put it down, and then Crutwick squeezes it for the Ramblers. Custer from deep. Not even close. Battle for it. Crutwick takes. And he has done a little bit of everything for the Ramblers today. He'll shoot two. Clayton Custer would love to have that shot back. <laughs> he followed through it. <laughs> Hit nothing but air. And he was mad at himself on that play. He's a 44% mm -hmm. shooter from beyond the arc. So, you know, that was uh, highly unusual to miss everything for Clayton Custer. So here's the freshman Crutwig, 74% free throw shooter. One point game. I can stream live 24 7 highlight scores and news free across all your connected devices with CBS Sports HQ. Check it out now, CBS Sports HQ.com. Game two of four here in Dallas. We know this one advances to take on Tennessee in a second round matchup on Saturday. Jaquan Newton. Sit around the perimeter. Up, switching defenses. Front leg is kind of man, except for the high screen. He's just manning up in the middle. Shot clock down to six. Walker. Right handed smash by the freshman out of Reading, PA. And that's something that Miami's going to start to realize. There's no rim protector out there for Loyola. As good a center on the offensive end as Crutchwig is, he's not going to block any many shots. Custer tried his hands again from deep. This time he puts it down. Got his feet set and got his three-point shot back that he missed the air ball earlier. Clayton knocked that one down. And that last play was made by Chris Likes to me. He swung the basketball all over, over the court to Lonnie. And Lonnie got a chance to walk at the fourth to drive it extremely hard without a pick and roll. Lawrence! Beautiful lob to Hewell. Attack the rim. The Hurricanes starting to see the light bulb turn on. What I'm seeing right now is an adjustment from Larry Edgar. They're setting these screens on the wing versus the top. And obviously, if you want to switch or hedge hard or turn it down, you're going to leave the lob wide open. Ingram. Off to the left, rebound squeezed by Hewell, the sophomore local kid out of Miami. 
Just over three minutes gone by. This is Newton. No! Around the horn to Walker. Puts it on the deck with a left hand. Lost it. Late whistle here. This will be a reach in foul against the Ramblers. As you can see right here, he swung the basketball around. No kick. Defense has slid all the way over it, and I love this play. Set the screen and roll down lower below the free throw line. Will give you opportunities for these nice lobs. But by the, the one, Hurricanes. The one thing in common for both those plays is that Miami is attacking the rim. They're not settling. So the Hurricanes inbounding underneath with Newton. Still plenty of time to shoot. With 17 on the timer. Hurricanes in the dance for a third straight year. Tenth time in their history. Three point shot. Chris Likes. The tough freshman out of Mitchellville, Maryland, a D.C. kid. Played at Gonzaga College High School, that great Catholic league in D.C. Big shot for the Hurricanes. That hard jab step backed Clayton Custer up and gave Likes just enough room to get that shot off. He drove him extremely hard, stopped on a dime, and you watched him in his last 11 games for the Hurricanes. That is about 13 points. He's the key, I think, for the Hurricanes in his second half. Yeah, you got to respect that quickly. Richardson's three won't go. And then Richardson, the swat. Coming out of nowhere, Lakes. Little back in his pass. Inside to Newton. Masterfully done by Lakes. Timeout, Loyola. Biggest lead of the day for Miami. Mosin knows what it's like to play in this tournament. He was here, of course, with Clay in 1989. He actually played his tournament game here in Dallas at the Old Reunion Arena against Missouri, that great Mizzou team with Anthony Peeler, Byron Irvin, hoping to coach his young Ramblers to the second round. Jackson unable to follow his own miss, and boy, Richardson turned his ankle, left ankle, as he tries to get back into the play. And look at him make this steal, incredible. Up the floor, Towns all the way to the rack. Here's the key. All nine players from that team graduated and had a combined almost two dozen advanced degrees. So in this age when we talk about basketball players and, you know, guys going to the pros, et cetera, nobody talks about education. Every one of those guys is better for that experience. And it's just incredible. 55 years ago to the day, as they're back in the NCAA tournament, talking about Loyola for the first time in 33 years. And a, a very nice tip of the cap to them from Mississippi State. And big time Miami still has it going offensively. Jaquan Newton, the senior, as the Hurricanes guys have hit five of their last six shots. Mm. Whistle blown here against Lonnie Walker, I believe. Let's I see who they get. Actually, it's on likes. Chris likes, yeah. He said hand check in the rest of the league. Good ball pressure by Chris. And right now, Miami is figuring out the defense of the Ramblers and starting to make some shots. They've outscored in this half, Loyola. They've outscored 13 to 6. And we talk about the offense because we've seen some outstanding plays on offense. Jackson, the Dallas kid back in his hometown. Beautifully done. I was about to laud the defense, but that time <laughs> wide open going down the middle as Miami had a lapse in communication. Jackson, as we told you earlier, grew up about 20 minutes away, Dallas suburbs of Clinton here. And just minutes after the field was announced, he called his mother and said, Mom, I'm coming home. <laughs> what a moment for him and his family. Nice little turnaround play. Me time by Dewan Hewell. Well, Dewan Hewell taking advantage of his size against Jackson, but on this play on the other end, great screen and roll. He's playing a five spot on the Hurricanes weak side. You got to have somebody come over on the, on the roller just to be able to stop him from a clean roll and a clean bucket. 11 4 extended run for Miami. Richardson staying in the game. And look at Towns. Masterful. Another reverse layup, the unselfishness of Loyola, giving them a chance to get back into this game. Towns a transfer from Fairleigh Dickinson in New Jersey, actually his second taste of the NCAA tournament. Tend to shoot. He was starting to get comfortable, had a good look at it, couldn't put it down. 
Oh, pass. Oh, that was a charge. Offensive foul against Jackson. Hewell was there to you draw gotta, it for Miami. You got to love that by Hewell. He can block shots at the top with good ball movement, lateral foot speed for him, being able to get in the right position and take this charge. <laughs> Barely. Hmm. Take a look at the, the move there by Williamson. He almost sidestepped Hewell. Now that contact wasn't probably enough in normal sense to be able to knock the guy down, but got the call anyway. He was solid. Sergeant Larinaga, so much respect for this Loyola program and what they have built. This is we mentioned earlier, knows what it's like to be a, an 11 seed making a run. An 11 seed making that epic run to the Final Four in 2006. And right now, with a five point lead over these Ramblers. Tell you what, Miami doing a great job of exploiting the mismatch is Andre Jackson at 6'5", just not big enough to guard either Hewell or Zumbu. Jackson hit with his second personal. There's Walker. Quiet so far here in the second half. Darren Vasilovich with the lead. Oh, 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 no call. And the rebound corralled by Custer. Up to Florida Williamson. Another beautiful shovel pass inside to Jackson. And the Ramblers once again showing a pulse. Williamson doing a nice job of those dump off passes to Jackson, driving it extremely hard, drop, drawing the defense. And they're getting some buckets. He's going through the small lineup. Moja trying to get back in this game offensively, but they're having a hard time rebounding. He's Zundu on the glass. Off the miss three from Walker. And free throws coming up. For the junior out of Charlotte when we come back, which of these two teams will earn the right to advance to the second round for a date with Tennessee? Yeah, to add to that, Lynn, you said it best. They're undersized, but they're only down two as far as points in the paint, 32 to 30. Hurricanes are up, but only by two. He zoomed you at the free throw line. You saw the Loyola contingent so proud of this Ramblers men's program that uh, Really has been an afterthought in the Chicago basketball scene for a number of years. Of course, North 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 terrific run that they had last year to Paul. But to right now, these Ramblers owning the Windy City. Let's see what they've done in the paint. Down five here after the Azundu free throws. In the quarter, Moja just stole some minutes with Andre Jackson playing the center spot to Cameron. Got a chance to step, step back in, and there's Williamson. Did you see Kurt, Kurt Wade with that block out? <laughs> he took his legs out from under him. Sent a little message there with the physical play. Lucas Williams in the three. Here is Vasilovich. Top shot. So crafty for Miami. Vasilovich from Australia. Born in Alberta, Canada. It's a grew up in Melbourne. Silver did a nice job with the pump fake. And then drove it. And that's a tough shot he made with these. Mm. He zoomed you, turning back the freshman Williamson. Four point Miami lead. Look at Lakes run into by his own teammate Zundu, and then Custer all by himself. Two point game. Critical turnover for the Hurricanes land. You saw Chris trying to drive it and then wanted to change direction. <laughs> I don't think he, Zudu, I got a chance to even see him. You got to be under control. Zutu trying to get two back, unable to put it down. Still too far from the basket for that little jump ball. There's Ingram as we come up on the midway point of the second half in Dallas. Good job to get it back to Custer, reset. Loyola, the number three team in the country in field goal percentage. Crutwick coughs it up, likes the steal. First player to the floor was Chris Likes, and he got it. That's a big time block by Ingram. Chris Likes, I thought he should have kicked that one out to Lonnie Walker, the fourth. I was going to say, low man wins <laughs> unless you're trying to get to the hoop when you got the big fella chasing you. And it pays to be just a little bit bigger.
Dante Ingram, a senior from Chicago, actually a high school teammate of Jabari Parker as a junior at Simeon High School, combined to win a state championship. Past the 10 minute mark, here comes Lex. Into the corner to Walker. Tough floater won't go. And Loyola Chicago controls. Hurricane side one of the foul on that one. That was a great play by Rice being able to break down the defense and kick it to Walker. Williamson from Dean. Mm. Rambler fans ready to blow the roof off this place. And they got a sizable number of folks came from Chicago. Including their 98-year-old team chaplain, sister Jean Dolores Schmidt. Has been such an inspiration to this Loyola team all season. Cheering on her Ramblers in Dallas. Lakes can't hit. This is Walker. Off the offensive rebound by Wardenburg. Big shot by Walker, the freshman. Big rebound by Wardenburg, who came from behind the basket to get in good position. Remember, Mo Malone used to do that. I'm not sure Wardenburg was imitating him, but. <laughs> And I love that Lonnie Walker, the fourth, was talking to himself. He said, let's go pick it up after he knocked down that three-point shot. I'm sure if Wardenburg heard of Mo Malone going up in New Zealand. Ingram from deep. Splash! Oh, he got a ball game. I just love that possession. Both players sharing it back and forth. Defense running and trailing. And Ingram got a nice jump shot from the top. Second three from Ingram. So impressive today, a senior from Chicago, Vasilovic, and he knocks it down from deep. 67th made three for Vasilovic to lead Miami this season. That was an unconscious three. No movement, no hesitation. Under eight minutes of play. back and forth and we're seeing players knock down shots but they're playing the game the right way they're sharing it and that was a nice screen for Custer to knock down that three. Loyola's only turned it over once and Miami's only turned it over twice so it's pretty near flawless the way these guys are handling it. Great execution. Look at that. The timeout with a nice back door using the defense against them because they like to pressure and deny the wing. Larry Nager with a nice little wrinkle out of the timeout. Backdoor for Lonnie Walker. Yeah, anticipating the aggression. Using it against him, as he said. It was Wardenburg dropping it down on a beautiful backdoor cut to find Walker. Take the shoot. Here comes Custer trying to turn the corner and ridden there defensively on or from Izudu, I should say, so the foul on him. Oh, we wanted to send our best wishes to those in Miami affected by the tragic pedestrian bridge collapse earlier today. It happened on the campus of Florida International University there in Miami. Thinking about those folks affected by a very, very scary situation. We saw some of the pictures on Twitter and online. Thoughts and prayers with everyone out there. Dante Ingram calling for the ball boys to tend to that wet spot as he hit the deck. Big shot for the Ramblers. I don't know if anyone heard him. We'll do that Special man spot. to stop the game. Here's Izundu. Walker, this was a long two. A little bit short. And he a free down and Izundu got it back. Back up the floor comes Towns. Blocked by Walker from the back. He's still the Ramblers ball with plenty to shoot. Still didn't get the wet spot. Well, they didn't get the wet spot. All right, good. I was about to go out there with a towel. As you can see, shot that one, comes down. Definitely a wet spot and slipping, trying to get up. I saw it. They didn't give me a towel, though. <laughs> Two point Miami lead. Here's Custer. Out of Jackson. And a little hip check foul charge to Chris Lights. And number three on the diminutive point guards. Good underneath out of bounds play. Misdirection. And they got the switch and then drew the foul. 14 fouls apiece. Williamson will throw in with 6.26 to play. 
as these two teams come down the home stretch. Towns with a lead bounce, and then Jackson turned back. Well played by both Newton and Walker. Great recovery by Walker. Able to block the shot from behind. Close to being a foul, but good job of recovery. There's Custer. They were bring it back out. Shot clock at five. Steps into a three. He might have got fouled on that play. Back comes Miami. Here's Newton. Able to stop on a dime. No basket. Offensive foul. And Newton can't believe it. <laughs> There's nobody else who can't believe it. <laughs> well, let's watch it. Oh, yeah, that's that's a charge. Wasn't in a lot of contact, though, Smith. Didn't he kind of pull up? Yeah, he did, but that's a charge. That's pretty similar to the one they called on Lucas Williamson on the other end a couple of minutes ago. Not a lot of contact, but the defensive player sold it. Some critical call there instead of a potential three point play. Miami's lead remains at two. Jackson puts it on the deck to the rack. And Hewell, who has been a beast around the basket, got a piece of it. Yeah, Jackson's got to dunk that. He's got to have his palms down instead of palms up above the rim. This will be an over the back. On Anthony Lawrence. And the basketball going the other way. Well, you can't teach speed until now. Bleacher Report. Get alerts for your teams and your scores before anyone else. Download the app today. Spiro Dita, Steve Smith, Len Elmore, Roz Gold on Wood A, and the rest of our True TV crew, Scott Brandwine, our producer, Matt Lip, our director. So here's the clue that we have for you in Dallas, bringing you these incredible pictures. And two more games left to be played. Interesting right now. Very small line, lineup for the Ramblers. Ingram from deep. Running out too much back of the rim, and that last touch by the Hurricanes. Tell you what, man, you got to appreciate the hustle by Andre Jackson. Tried to go get that range rebound. Watch the miss. He comes all the way from the other side to get a hand on it. And keep that possession for the Rangers. You're so right, man. That's a high space rebound that he went after. They are small. They're going this high pick and roll, seeing if they can get some kind of mismatch with Jackson. Yeah, that's the game right there. High screen and roll and get some movement. Here's Lawrence off the steal. Bounce left wing likes. Can't put it down, but Lawrence is there to clean it up. Yeah, the size of the Hurricanes right now took over in transition on that play. Lawrence third in the ACC this season with steals. Able to ignite the fast break. Richardson after turning his left ankle earlier in the half, staying on the floor, showing some toughness. Jackson. But Hewell, resourceful. I just love the patience. Drove it hard, pivoted around, and then he just didn't go up. Kind of froze Hewell on that nice little pump fake. Jackson had some big, big games this season for Loyola. Maybe his best game of the season in that win in Gainesville at the Gators. As Miami turns it over, off the hands of Newton and out of bounds. Newton just a little bit too much in a hurry, but take a look at the move. And you mentioned that he got um, Ewell just to kind of step in at a hole, and he couldn't get out of it. And then a nice pivot and turn and soft touch. And you saw it, it was just being able to spin and also a hesitation. Caught him with his eyes, made him free. This is a Loyola team that comes out of the tournament red hot. Winners of 10 straight, fourth longest active streak in the nation. Ingram. Tough shot. Not a high percentage shot on that one from England. Ramblers have had five possessions with a chance to tie or take the lead, and they've come up empty. Down two with three and a half minutes remaining. They'll shoot two. Miami and Loyola of Chicago. With the winner advancing to take on Tennessee. Boy, have they been good down the stretch to get into the dance. It was Hewell, meantime, hits the free throw. There's Brown on the bench. A team that climbed to as high as sixth in the AP poll before he went down. 
in the tournament for a fourth time. Under the watch of Jim Laranaga in his six plus seasons in South Florida. One of two was Huell. It's a three point Miami lead. We come up on the final three minutes. Here's Towns from Dino. Back in, no, rebound Huell. I was just going to say that Loyola didn't need to absolutely take a three, recognize time and score, get the high percentage shot, maybe try and draw a foul by challenging. That wasn't a bad shot. But you can get better. Shot clock down to 10. Here comes Newton in the corner. He's, he's going glass. Boy, how big is Hewell been down the stretch? He's been perfect on that little play right there. Went right to the front of the rim. They got the basketball to him, and that was a light touch. But he made it look good from Newton off the glass in the paint. And this strong Loyola contingent oh, oh. right now sitting on their hands. Crutwig looks like he's fouled on the catch. And now a one and one for Loyola, so a huge call against Miami. Another look at the Newton dime to Hewell. That was a nice soft touch, catching that around outside of the paint area, going up for a nice jump hook off the glass. Guys, one thing we should point out about Jim Laranaga and Miami, eight and one and one were the Hurricanes this season, Lenny, in games decided by five points or less. You asked them about it yesterday. There, there was something that is very tough and gritty about this Miami team they've been here before. And I told him, I said, besides good coaching, what's the, what's the key? And we said, uh, we don't make free throws at a high rate, but at the end of the game, we just find a way to make our free throws, make the big plays from some of these young guys. But with the big freshman. Gets a friendly bounce. It is a one possession game with a second round date with Tennessee hanging in the balance. Hewell somehow kept his pivot foot and then the fix by Crutwig. Just swallowed him up with that huge frame. Brookwood did a nice job of taking the, absorbing the bump, stood his ground, and then got a hand in the steal on that play. Again, time and score situation. Work for the best possible shot. Doesn't have to be a three, but get bailed out. That's not bad. Anthony Lawrence has just fouled out for Miami. And he certainly didn't need that so far from the basket. And now you put Loyola back on the free throw line, guys. A huge call, a big mistake by Lawrence. With under two minutes left. Well, you're totally right. You don't mind somebody catching the basketball, you know, out past the three point line, especially if you're in good legal guarding position. Lawrence just being a little bit aggressive. And Lenny, that's a huge loss among the best defensive players in the ACC, third in the conference in steals. And he now becomes a spectator. Yeah, I mean, and his athleticism is something that's absolutely needed. Averages about nine points a game, shoots the ball pretty well. It would have been another option. One and one for Ingram. Mm. Critical miss. Crutwood trying to keep it alive, and then a two ball is called. Boy, it looked like Likes was fouled. Marcus Towns a little bit aggressive. The possession arrow does favor Miami. Officials conferencing here. And now they will change the call. I think and that hit Marcus Towns with a personal. That appeared to be the right call, wow, at least I don't from know. our vantage point. I don't know. He looked like Freddie he disagrees. Reached. Yeah, it looked like he reached for it on hand underneath the ball. And uh, Light had both hands on the ball. Obviously, the size difference. So watch again. Not a lot of body there. That's reaching for the ball. I think you're right. You're totally right. Man, Very close see. call. But it turns out that it's still Miami ball, regardless. <laughs> One ref was looking at it from behind, and the other one who called a jump ball had the correct angle on the play. Next Loyola foul puts Miami in the bonus. Here's Hewitt. Lost it. The key to that last call would have been that would have been the fourth foul on Lawrence. And that would have put him in obviously some jeopardy. Here's Williamson holding. We come up on the final 60 seconds. Custer from D. Splash! We are tied at 60. That was a huge play. You call that hammer where the ball goes on one side, and then there's an up screen. 
Beautiful call by Porter Moser, the coach. 52 seconds left. A second round date with Tennessee on the line here in Dallas. Here's Newton holding. Shot clock down to six. Newton, long two, and he sticks it. I mean, he's a gamer. Jaquan Newton turned down the screen, told Hill, I got it. Drove it hard, got some separation, and knocked down a clutch shot for the Hurricanes. Called this number all the way from the bench. Towns is fouled, and he'll shoot free throws. Jaquan Newton out of Newman Garetti, the powerhouse high school in Philly, hitting the biggest shot of his basketball life. That was absolutely an isolation play. Called from the bench. Jim Laranega put it in his best offensive player's hands. And Newton did the rest. Yeah, Newton. Had the screen and roll coming up, he turned it down, and when you drive it extremely hard, the defender trying to stop on a dime, and when you can elevate like that, he made it look easy. Marcus Towns unable to convert on the first. He is a 72% free throw shooter. High school teammate of Paul Anthony Towns, of course, the first overall pack back in 2015. Experienced the tournament two years ago with Fairleigh Dickinson. Desperately needs this point here with 26 seconds left. And Loyola trying to keep their dream alive. Make a miss. Got to go for the hard foul. The junior out of Edison, New Jersey hits. One point game. That's now defense for offense. Crutwick sits and Ingram back onto the floor. This is where the speed of Chris Light's been able to come get the basketball. Somebody else has to come help. Logan popped off of his leg. Wow! A defensive gem by Williamson. I'll give him credit for that, but he was trying to foul. I thought when you look at him, he was just man, reaching. He slipped, so he came out and tried to get the basketball. He right. slipped, so right. he just reached for it. That was well, he went beautiful. with both hands because he was trying to foul. No matter what, you gotta give it to him. He was trying to foul. Right, I give it to him. I don't know if he's trying to foul, man. I thought on that well, you play got, he was going for the steal. All, you got, you got to foul. That's yeah, you do, but I think you first. Well, he's all coaches staff. Yeah, you go gonna say go for the steal first, and well, that's yeah. what he did. He went for it, and he got it. And look at Larry he's upset. But if he missed that. He still has some eyes to come up his ball. All right, there's a lot of time going off the clock if they come at him. The All idea matters. was, the idea was, you go at it and try for the foul first, but you got to foul. You got to extend the game without taking I'm, too I'm much totally time right, off Lynn, the clock. I'm totally right, but you got to go for the steal first if you don't well, want yeah, to foul. I'm not, I'm not and he did that. that. I give Lucas Wilson a lot of credit. Go for that steal, and it goes off of a beautiful play. Regardless, the result is what it is, but. He, went, he got the ball, there's no question about it, but you still, in your mindset, if you go for that steal, if you don't get it, you got a foul. Guys, what about strategy here? There's a Porter Moser rallies his troops down a point here. They will have it, 23.5 seconds left. What do they do? Well, I think for them is they came out with an unbelievable hammer play. Looking for Moser right now. I'm interested right now to see if you have Cameron in at the five or you have Jackson in the five. If you have either one, Cameron, if he rolls, he takes a smaller defender. And if you have Jackson, his quicker than speed, you might want to pop him out. And I say best possible shot, best available shot. You got to hold on. You're going to take the last shot. Officials did confirm that it was last touched by Lonnie Walker. You can run, you can run high screen and roll. That's what they do best. And especially if it's Crutwig. Loyola Chicago in the tournament for the first time in 33 years. Trying to advance to a second round date with Tennessee. First you got to get it in bounds though. Ingram throws into Custer, the junior. Shot clock turned off. Everyone standing here in Dallas. Towns! Oh. Offensive rebound, Crutwig, no! Rebound, Rodenberg, and Miami has it! Two good looks at it inside for the Ramblers, unable to convert, and a one and one for Miami. Hey, nothing wrong with that play. Got his best isolation player, great contest. And this was Cameron. I thought he went up. He got fouled. Mm, he got fouled. I'm with you, Lynn. He got good fouled. rebound, but he got fouled. Mm. Lonnie Walker can extend it to a three-point lead. Still a one possession. One game. and one here. Walker must hit the front end. The freshman 75% at the line this season. 
First free throws today. Mm. Missed it. Here they come. Nice up. One time out, they don't take it. Oh! have said that they will look to see if there is time remaining. So as Loyola celebrates the officials going to the replay monitor. And they're asking both teams to get back to their benches. Take a look. Either way, time left or not, give Ingram a lot of credit. That is splash, and there's 4.4 seconds. Four four seconds left. That's still a huge shot. Oh, my goodness. Boy, he felt that one, Lynn. Watch it. You had to. He felt that <laughs> one. You had to feel it. He had time to dribble further in. They will put 0.3 four, three. seconds on the clock, and the reaction from Jim Laranega tells the story. Well, will it be a premature celebration or perhaps we got to take it out from underneath the basket in the backcourt. Point three is the minimum for a shot. They can't catch and shoot here. You're right. So point three. No, no, you can catch it. Point three is the minimum. Right. You can catch it and shoot it if you can turn. And it'll be interesting to see if you put a man on the ball after Duke Louisville in 92. A lot of coaches start to realize that you better put a guy on the ball when you have to make that kind of pass. Yeah, Lynn, I'm with you. I would definitely, I wouldn't give him a free throw. I would put somebody on there, especially with some size, to be able to lace, make, make him have to think about making that pass. Absolutely. Jim Laranega calling a timeout. What's he telling his guys in that huddle? Uh, they got to find a way to get the ball into the front court and give somebody a chance to catch, turn, and shoot. 0.3 seconds is the minimal amount of time you're allowed. Yeah, totally right. And it, you might see Laranega and this Miami Hurricanes try to throw something at the basket land and maybe if you don't get the bucket you might try to draw a foul. Well that's what that's the other thing to discuss. Maybe drawing a foul, you know, running down the baseline and setting a guy up. I mean there are a number of ways to do it, but Loyola's gonna have to resist making contact. Lenny, you've seen some of these late game moments. <laughs> Nineteen ninety two. Absolutely. Duke, Kentucky, the famous Christian late in the shot. Where, where nobody was on the ball. Burton Lundquist with that I Grant Hill call that pass. Nobody was on the ball. Right. Grant, Grant had full vision. Grant Hill, your stunt double. Yep. Two point Loyola lead. Dante Ingram, the senior from Chicago. He's going to be on the ball. He's down there waiting. Trying to get his hometown team oh, he's not. into the second round. You better get on that ball. You kidding me? Hey, he's on it. Yeah, I was going to say, he was backing up for a second. Well, I think he's backing Time up because he knew he was calling the timeout. And the chess match between Moser and Larinaga continues. And a chance to show you that Ingram three. That's just nice. Like you can see the defender was right there, but he got a chance to knock it down. But before that, fellas, Loyola Rivalers got that rebound and made that play possible. And Ingram shot that one with a nice little home run trot. Beautiful shot by Dante. You know how that feels, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I definitely do. Ingram, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament MVP, had 18 points in the final to defeat Illinois State. And this Loyola Chicago team, winners of 10 straight, one of the hottest teams in the field. A lot of people talking about them as a potential sleeper and showing you why here. As those Miami Hurricane fans, meantime, hoping for some late game magic. Well, again, at the beginning of the telecast, we told you this is about as fine a team, more com as complete a team as the Missouri Valley Conference has seen. And obviously, you get on this stage and you're playing a team that hasn't seen you much. You're able to work your magic and play to your strength, and that's what they did. They they withstood a couple of Miami runs, put Miami out in front seven points. But yet they came back on them. It ain't over yet. Point three seconds. Miami now is out of timeouts. See, there's the foul. Point three. Wrong. Long pass. Deflected, and it's over. March Madness Magic.
as the Ramblers from Loyola, Chicago, moving on to the second round. Their first NCAA tournament victory in 33 years.